All right, let's talk a little bit about Cam Battles. Uh, Matt Patricia told NBC Sports a couple weeks ago that every battle, every position is up for, you know, the grabbing except for the quarterback position. I mean, we already know that. But today let's talk about the cornerback position, the second cornerback position. Opposite, I believe Jeff Okuda is going to start. It's, you know, unless he does that bad in camp, I don't believe that uh, nobody else will be the number one corner. So I'm going to assume that he wins that position. I'm also assuming by starting camp battles, that training camp will be started at some point pretty soon, and we will have a season. Don't, you know, visualize seeing the NFL have a bubble at all, so uh, we'll see pretty much how it pans out. Some places like the Lions and Packers expect to have some fans at some capacity making fans sign waivers and wear masks. Other cities like Philadelphia have already said there will be no fans in attendance at Eagles games, so uh, let's talk about the second quarterback position. Opposite Jeff Okuda, and I think it's three guys that got it up for for grabs for us. Uh, Mike Ford, Desmond Trufant, and Amani Rockley. I believe Trufant is the leader in the clubhouse just because he got a nice amount of money. But check, check out our Detroit Lions talk playlist for more videos like this. Appreciate the love and support, but uh, got to say as well, too, it was another guy that got some solid money that came in the Sean Shed from... Seattle a couple years ago, we thought he was going to be the second opposite corner of Darius Slay, and it turns out, excuse me, it turns out that, you know, he ended up getting cut. He got, excuse me, he got brought back uh, due to some injuries uh, in the middle of the season, but the Lions cut him, so I'm not sure what Desmond Trufant language in his contract say, but let's start off there. I believe Trufant will be the leader in the clubhouse for that position, just off experience, just off he is a man press corner by trade and just off, you know, his contract, he making more money probably than Mike Ford and Imani Rock we combined. So he probably will go out there and be the starter. Can we have a situation where it's like uh DJ Hayden and Nevin Lawson where they go they interchange being a starter or interchange snaps because there's no clear winner? Uh I'm not sure, but uh Trufant, I'm not a fan of his at all. Maybe like three or four years ago. Um, I would have thought it would have been a great pickup. The Lions are already always a day short or a dollar late. He's a good press man cover. People look at his numbers say it was better than Darius Slay. Totally different system. Atlanta plays um, more uh, zone than man. They also had better pass rush than the Lions last year with Vic Beasley and Tack McKinley. So they play a little bit different. With the, with the Pistons, oh, excuse me, with the Lions, it's a lot of man. You know, no disguising. You know what they want to do. Darius Slay was asked to cover... You know, the best receivers, you know, Diggs got the best of them last year, but to cover a receiver one-on-one -on -one with no pressure and no help behind him, what Darius Say did was spectacular, and you can't just look at the numbers and judge what he did and say, oh, he this, about, he this good of a corner. Richard Sherman couldn't do what Darius Slade did last year, so, you know, it's all about system fits in the NFL. Some systems make players look better than others. Some systems make players look worse than others. If Darius Slay was an above or average cornerback, he would have got fried last year. So we're going to see... What Desmond Trufant gonna bring to the table? I mean, what they call, you know, what they call, you know, more zone, what they disguise more this off season, this season. Nobody knows. Corey Eulen is supposed to bring something from the table from Philly, and Philly play a little bit of everything. You know, Jim Schwartz will play some zone. He play some man. He play some combination. Uh, he'll disguise. He'll bring pressure. Matt Patricia won't do that. So Desmond Trufant's gonna be in a position that he's never been in in the league. But good thing about him is he a veteran. He been around the block. He's a press man cover corner by trade. That's what he do. So he should be able to look successful in the system. But Desmond Trufant, his cousin, Mark, his brother Marcus Trufant, Champ Bailey, or Deion Sanders, if you don't disguise, you don't get pressure, and you rush three or four players every time against five blockers and sometimes six or seven blockers, it ain't going to matter. You know, anybody on the outside, eventually, if they got to cover five or seven to ten Mississippi, they're going to get cooked. Now, talk about uh, Mike Ford for a minute. He's been around the block. I think he is a I think he is a great backup. You know, he might be one of the better backup corners in the league. And I think you know he keep getting better and better. He came as an undrafted rookie free agent in the middle of the season, done well, and don't sleep on him. If some injuries happen, and he he able to take that position and run off with it. He the dark horse in my opinion for that for that uh, second cornerback position. Um, six foot, nice size, nice speed. You know, technique improving. I think you know I think he he can buy. For a starting position in a lot of, in the league in a lot of these different places, he just slept on because he's not a household name coming out of Southern Missouri. But I liked him last year. You know, I thought Rashad Melvin was a good fit 
for what they've done. And people say, well, the Lions gave up this many yards in the air last year. It's not the cornerback's fault. It's, you know, it's the defensive scheme fault. When Deshaun Hand went down and they didn't, you know, replace him with a better um, asset than Mike Daniels, then it was a wrap. They didn't blitz. They didn't do nothing last year. They didn't disguise. They didn't look like it was something was coming and back out of it. It was mano a mano, hat on the hat. You cover him, you cover him, and, you know, basically no pressure and bend on break. So um, I think Mike Ford would be, you know, be a dark horse, especially with some injuries, COVID going, going around, you know, be, expect COVID to hit some Lions players regardless. No matter how many, you know, protective measures they take, it's hard to tell uh, millionaires and multimillionaires to not go out, not enjoy enjoy it, especially when they school, their kids going to school, their wives have to go to work or go out and go grocery shop or do what they do. It's hard to stay in the bubble, you know what I'm saying? So be expect some of these backups to play this year more than expected. You know, expect them to expand the roster past what 51, 52 players. Probably going to go up to 60-some players, man. Be able to extend the practice squad and extend the roster a little bit as well too. So Mike Ford might be an integral part of what they're doing. He can pretty, pretty much play everywhere inside outside so you know he best on the outside so don't don't sleep on him you know securing and locking down the position at some point uh this year and Amani Rocky I think he's like the last guy um that's that can go in there you got also got a few other guys like Tony McCray you got a uh what D Virgin still on the squad as well too I believe but I think he like the last guy you know that I can name here that can go after and I would like to just start him um usually the Lions like to take the cheap route this year they went out and took True Font, and I think part of taking True Font was probably not being secure in their sales, being able to secure Jeff Okuda. You know, maybe it was fear of somebody jumping up grabbing Okuda. Maybe it was you know maybe you know maybe maybe it was you know we didn't want to keep Darius Slay, so if we didn't get Okuda, then we would move Darius Slay. Who knows what they really thought about it? I would have just ran because you got a really good backup in Mike Ford. I truly would have just ran with a. Uh, Amani, I would tell him start, do Jeff Okuda on one side, and let Coleman start on the inside. But I understand the trend of thought as well. You can't have a year two guy that didn't start year one and a year one guy out there and not have enough veteran experience. So I understand bringing Okuda, I mean, uh, Dance with Trufant in. But I thought it was, you know, a lot better options out there. Um, shit, uh, Drake Hill Patrick was out there. And I think he better than Dance with Trufant. Maybe not per se as a man cover corner. Um, with some other corners out there as well, too. Trey Wayne's Dark Horse Denard, who's a younger version of Desmond True Fine. Maybe not as good as True Fine once was, but, you know, maybe in Cincinnati it just didn't work. You know, he's a Michigan State Spartan. So, you know, I felt that they could have went cheaper and better um, than True Fine, but I like to start on Marnie and Rocky right away. You're going out there with two young corners. You might as well let them grow together, both long, athletic, press corners. They do well. Um, Marnie and Rocky showed last year that he could locate the ball. But one of the issues with him, he was a little injured, one of the issues with him in college was lack of experience. That's what it was. He was only a one-year starter. So it's hard to have a dude that only started one year in college and a handful of games last year come in and start the cornerback position. So they had to have some type of security behind or in front of Monty or Rock. I don't think they felt 100% comfortable with Mike Ford. I would have brought Rashad Melvin back before I would have bought this from Trufant. But that's here nor there. But, you know, if it was up to me, um, depending on how close the battle was in camp, um, I would start Amani Rockwe. If it's like this, and True Fine here and Amani Rockwe here, I would start a Rockwe. Anything more than this, 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 that, uh, that True Fine running away or Ford running away with it, then I would start Ford or um, True Fine. But a lot of people seem to be optimistic about True Fine Detroit. They didn't do their homework. I don't care what pro football folks say, and I will be vindicated if they have a season this year and he started getting cooked like he did in Atlanta. And people are going to be saying he ain't this good. They should have kept Slay, this, that, and the third. But if it was up to me, if I was the head coach, I would start the younger guy. Um, but once again, it depends on how camp looks. If they close, you go with the younger guy because he got more potential. If they, if Trufant seems to be uh, separate itself more than enough, then you got to start Trufant. But we'll see. But Trufant by trade is a press cover corner. People talking about he had two touchdowns last year. I think they came in the same game or something like that. But I'm not impressed. I haven't been impressed with Trufant like three or four seasons ago. That's when he's pretty good, but he suffered the injury. But I would go with Armani Rockley. I would have picked up Trey Waynes, the Dark Quest, Denard before him. Shit, Proust and Mukamara, Eli Apple all before uh, Desmond Trufant. He's just not that good, and I've been saying that from the very, very beginning. But I would start Armani. 
But, you know, they paid True Fine. If True Fine come in and he showed that he way better than Armani and Camp, Armani, you know, probably going to have to take a back seat until True Fine fuck up. What's well, going to happen regardless? But, hey, let me know what you guys think about the training camp battle at the second cornerback position. I'll be continuing with these through the weeks until we get to the regular season. There may not be a preseason in addition to that. Also, we'll start the season preview pretty soon as well. We preview every opponent that the Lions play. Don't forget you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All the links in the description. Want to make a donation, share the video, cash out PayPal description. Check out uh, our Detroit Lions Talk playlist for more Lions videos. One time for one time, we're gone.